Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this DaVinci Resolve 14 video, we're going to be talking about more options that you have available uh, to use on the timeline. Everything from right here past the Razor Edit tool uh, to down here where we have the timeline view options. So that's about uh, eight different tools here. If you wanted to know more about uh, just basic cuts, the first three tools, and adding clips to the timeline, go back to the previous video. So let's go ahead and uh, start talking about these tools. So the first one, oops, <laughs> using it ahead of time. The first tool that we have here is called Insert Clip. So if I was to double click on this uh, raw video footage I have in the media pool and choose a spot inside of there, set endpoints and out points with I and O on my keyboard, um, then we have a clip that we can work with with these three functions. Now, when we hit insert clip, what's going to happen is that wherever we have uh, this line positioned on the timeline, it's going to literally take this clip and add it right inside it, pushing everything in front of it to the right. So we'll be able to see this um, in action here. So, okay, yeah, that's a really short clip, but you do get the idea. Everything to the right got pushed aside. You'll also notice that uh, this clip, which was originally one clip, got separated into two because we were inserting uh, the new clip uh, in the middle of the first clip. So uh, yeah, that will happen. Clips can be separated and all clips to the right will get pushed ahead. So next up, I'm going to control Z this, we have overwrite clip. So what this is going to mean is rather than pushing the footage to the right, it's just going to overwrite anything it finds on the timeline and the tracks adding them to. So if I hit overwrite clip, you can see that this clip gets separated into two, but the footage that was actually this one second here is completely gone. Although it's two separate clips now, that short duration <clears throat> that the new clip overrided is completely gone now. So you have to be really careful about using that uh, tool. Uh, as you can see, an alternative by default is to have 10 on the keyboard for the same functionality. Uh, the, the key bindings actually do depend on uh, what you set the basic hotkeys to when you were loading up DaVinci Resolve, but that's the DaVinci Resolve hotkey anyway. And then lastly, replace clip. So replace clip is a little bit different um, in that when you have a clip on the timeline, it's going to try to completely replace the footage there. And if the clip is longer in your media pool, where you're inserting and in, uh, basically adding the in out points from, then it's not going to extend the length of your overall video project. It's merely going to replace this clip with as much footage as it can up to the duration of the original clip. So if I hit replace clip here, you'll notice that it has the same duration. And um, that's regardless of how much time you actually had the in out point set up there. It'll just try to fill the duration of the previous clip to the best of its ability. So as long as there's footage, it's going to try to replace it um, and maintain the same duration. So you may have already noticed in my working around the timeline that snapping is enabled by default. But what snapping means if you're not used to it is that while it's enabled, which you can toggle with N on your keyboard, you see it uh, getting lit up or disabled, is that whenever we try to move a timeline object close to something that already exists, it's going to snap them right together. And that's really useful because that's going to mean that um, because they're pushed right up next to each other, that there's not even a millisecond of uh, black space where these two clips aren't bouncing from one to the other. So if we turn off snapping, it becomes kind of a problem because you have to kind of manually get it to be at the right spot. And even worse than that, um, without snapping, you can actually accidentally overwrite some of your previous clip if you're not careful. Now, the downside of snapping is that if you do want to make very, very small adjustments, it's going to be hard to do that um, because snapping will always try to push them together. So if you actually did want to do something like just drag this a bit over the previous clip, to both simultaneously remove the end of that clip and have this one start where that one ends, um, then you can do that by disabling snapping. Whereas if you have snapping uh, enabled, you can kind of see it gets stuck there for at least a few milliseconds depending on um, 
how far zoomed in you are. So obviously the more zoomed in you are, uh, the less snapping is going to try to snap to. So here at this zoom, it seems to be snapping about four seconds. But if I zoom out further, then it's going to snap about 20, 30 seconds. So that's something to keep in mind while you're trying to work. The next tool is called position lock, where when we hit this, all of the tracks are going to simultaneously be position locked because you can do it individually by clicking over here on each individual track. But what this means is that you can't move the position of any of your clips uh, on your timeline. So if I try to drag this and move it, it's not going to move. Same with that, same with that. Um, now you can still make cuts. So if you wanted to remove the first second or two here, I can still do that. So I'm going to select this and delete it, but you can't move the clips. So if that's something you're trying to maintain the position of all your clips, you don't want to accidentally move anything, then the position lock will be useful for you guys. Now, next up is uh, something that's not really necessary, but can be useful for your own indication purposes, which are flags and markers. So you have all of these different clips, likely coming from different video sources, and you can mark those clips with either flags or markers. Now, when you use a flag, as we'll do here, I'll just set the bike SF clip to be a blue flag. You'll notice that the clip in the timeline um, basically all of the parts of it, the audio and the video, get marked with this blue flag. And not only for the clip that's actually in the timeline, but all the clips that are pulling from that same video audio source will be marked with the blue flag. Now, what does the blue flag mean? That's completely up to you and anyone else who might be working on your project. It's such a marker. Um, so you kind of can come up with your own scheme for maybe blue means it needs to be added or uh, like so needs to be edited or green means the audio is not loud enough. I'm just throwing out random examples there, but they're markers and you can use them for whatever purposes you want. So if we clear flags and we go over to markers, the difference is that markers are not going to apply to every clip in your timeline, but they're only going to apply to a specific position in your video. So if I go here and I add a red marker, you can see that that marker is corresponding with a specific time in our timeline. You can notice that it's possible to snap to that marker, but beyond that, what the marker actually means is really up to you. Um, you can just use it as a snapping point. You can also use it as a, maybe this needs to be edited, kind of a, a to-do task or something of that nature. Um, but yeah, it's good to know that the markers are there if you actually feel the need to use them in project. And that's basically the difference between flags and markers. Flags apply to all instances of the clip and are not specific in their time. And markers are tied to a specific time in the timeline. And you can also snap to markers. So since we've already demonstrated the zoom in, zoom out functionality here, and you have basically sound controls over here on the right, there's not really too much to talk about in the edit tab, except for the effects library. Well, I guess that is kind of a big thing where in future videos, possibly the next one, we will talk about uh, video transitions, audio transitions, adding titles, and some of these generator effects as well that come out of the box in DaVinci Resolve 14 free version. So that's going to be it for this video, continuing down the options of the edit tab in DaVinci Resolve 14. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.